this video, I wanna show you some of my best practices tips when it comes to designing your Power BI report. We're gonna go through my whole thought process by cleaning up a report from beginning to end. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanana and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. We upload new videos every week so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you search online you'll find lots of tips when it comes to cleaning up Power BI reports and designing them to be better but in this video we're going to cover just some of the tips uh, that I typically cover or use on a daily basis and just bear in mind that these are some loose tips uh, that can be broken and it might not apply to all scenarios but it's great to think about when you're going through the design process so have a look at this report pause the video and think about what's wrong with this report it has a lot of valuable information that it conveys and it has a lot of important slice uh, options for your data but the problem is that it's not very user-friendly or it doesn't convey the information as efficiently as it could be as a Power BI report so let's have a look at cleaning this up so the first step that I can give you is to create a consistent layout for your reports. A very popular layout that you might see is to have the titles on the top left hand side, to have the executive summaries like the cards on the top, you want to have the slicers on the left, and any of your visuals on the middle. This is a very popular format because it works, um, but you can choose whatever style you want, but just make sure that you stay consistent where you uh, place your visuals. So the next thing that you can do is to clean up your visuals. I tend to keep my visuals simple and onto the point. So let's start with the cards. So the cards act as like your executive summary and you want this to be as descriptive as possible. And from here what you can do is you can rename these cards to be more meaningful. So let's do that now. Some of the currency visuals uh, have some decimals for executive summary. Sometimes you want to show them, but sometimes they don't, uh, they're not necessary. So you can change them to show no decimals as well. So you can control it here in the format menu. The next thing maybe is you want to keep them consistent and maybe just a little bit smaller. So let's uh, do that here in this first one. So let's make this a little bit smaller from the category label, no on the data label. We'll make this let's say 35 and our category label I want to make it a little bit smaller and a great tip from here to make your lives a little bit easier um, if you want to do the same format to all the cards you can use the format painter so select the visual that you want format painter click on the card so you'll see it does the exact same uh, format options so the same thing here here and here so let's resize all these cards so they're all the same dimensions So let's move on to the slicers, which is the selection panes on the left hand side here. With these ones, you want to make sure that you have titles that are meaningful. Um, and I typically make them drop down so we save a bit of space in our reports. So to do that, you just change it to a drop down. What else you want to do with these selection panes is to check the kind of functionality that they have. So for example, uh, you can see in this region, we can select one region, but it's a single select. Now you can do a control click, but typically users won't know that. So you want to make sure that you make it as easy as possible for them to use these. And you can enable multi-select if you want your slicers to do that by going to the format pane, go to selection controls, disable control multi-select and then show select all so they can choose select all if they want that way you can allow them to select multiple uh, elements within your slicer your drop downs and same thing we can do the format painter to do the same for this one and the last one 
Now you can use the drop downs to save some space in your report, but one advanced tip that I can give you is to use hidden menus to save space for your visuals in your report page. If you don't know how to make it and how it looks like, I've covered it in a previous video. So check it out if you haven't yet. So now we move on to the visuals, which is uh, we'll move on to the pie chart first. Now, when it comes to visualizing your report, you wanna make sure you pick the right visual uh, for the type of data that you're visualizing. So for example, when you're comparing categories like this and you want to see how they're ranked between each other or how they fit as a whole um, pie chart works okay but having too many categories like this doesn't really add much value and it gets a little bit confusing and uh, too cluttered so instead you might want to choose something else maybe you want to just use a bar, a bar chart so let's have a look at that change it to a bar chart now you can see the values of the different categories ranked against each other quite easily, a lot easier to read than the pie chart. It's simple but effective. So from here we're not quite done yet. Uh, there are still a couple of things that I want to fix with this visual. So another tip that I can give you from here is less is more. So what that means is that if you don't need to show something, you shouldn't. So for example, you can see that we have a name here which will probably change to unit pr price by category. Now you know that this bar chart is showing unit price by category based on that title um, and you know that you can see on the axis one of the axis is a is a value is an amount and one of them is a list of uh, categories so by using the title you kind of already know what these axes means uh, so that means you can hide these axis titles they are a bit redundant so let's have a look at doing that let's go to here title on the x-axis and we'll do it on the y-axis too. Let's rename that title to make it uh, a little bit more descriptive. Unit price by category. What I also like doing when it comes to bar chart is instead of showing this axis of uh, uh, unit price is I prefer showing the data labels so you have the exact values uh, of your different categories without having to hover over uh, any of these bar charts. So uh, you want to hide the Y axis and then instead enable data labels that will give you the absolute value of those bars uh, we just want to make sure we want to hide those decimal places and there you go so now let's move on to maps so using maps is quite tricky uh, and although we have here a map of uh, count of orders by different countries let's just re, uh, remove that region filter there you can see the kind of bubble sizes of the orders per country but it's a bit difficult to tell uh, their ranking based on just these bubbles um, so what you can do is you can also use colorings uh, as a means to uh, kind of show the divergence of, uh, of data and you can do that through this formatting pane here so if you click on the uh, map here under the bubbles or on the data colors rather you want to click the FX icon on the default color and from here we can diverge the color so we want to do uh, we want to show it as red if it's getting higher and then the lowest value as a blue so he here you can see um, that it's highlighting all those uh, bubbles that have a higher number of orders on top of using the bubble sizes which is uh, an easier way to kind of identify uh, which countries have the biggest number of orders something like this let's just rename this map quickly as well just to stay consistent um, we will go to title by country the next thing we want to clean up is this bar chart down here. Now, uh, to show data kind of changing over time, you can use a bar chart or you can use the line charts. I prefer line charts. Um, and it's great to show change of value over time. Uh, from here, what I maybe want to do is hide some of the, the axes, so the, the titles of the axes, again, because it's a bit redundant. So let's do that really quickly. Let's also change the title. So let's say order volumes over time. 
So now you have a line chart that shows order volumes over time on a day-to-day -day basis. But let's say maybe you don't want to have a day-to-day -day basis change. You want to show maybe a month or a year. Um, what you can do is you can use a calendar table and show years and months instead of day-to-day. Uh, -to -day. So what we want to do is we want to tie this date to a calendar table that we need to create. And if you don't know how to create the calendar table, I covered it in a separate video. Um, but I've created a snippet, so we can just create one really quickly right now. I'll click from here, new table, and we'll paste it here. So what it does, it just creates a calendar table for us um, with these columns. Um, we'll just change, hit the month here, just sort it by month number. And then from the relationships view here, we'll just create a relationship between our calendars table and our order date table. Yep. So now we can use it as an axis here. So instead of using the order date as an axis, we can use year and we can use the month. So now, and we can even actually add day as well. So you can go back to the day view if you wanted to. And then from here, you can expand to a level down. So now you can see it on a month to month basis. And then you can go back to the day to day view if you want, right? But the point is you now are, have the ability to go up a level if you want to. The last tip I want to give you guys is to use backgrounds as much as possible to minimize the number of visuals you have in your report. Using backgrounds gets around the limitations that you typically get in Power BI reports such as uh, the ability of using custom fonts or using more complicated shapes. You also have the added benefit of having less visuals in your report which means uh, Power BI has to work less to load your page. For the purposes of this demo I've already created a uh, background here and you can see here it's a PM PNG of the orders reports that I've created in PowerPoint and I've covered how to create this but essentially you just create this in a PowerPoint and you export it in a PNG file. So this is the template in PowerPoint that I've created. So you can see it's just shapes here, I've added some text here and exported this as a, as a PNG for me to use in Power BI. So now let's go back to our reports. Um, let's go to uh, let's select the background of the page, select format, under page background, let's add this image which is in our report design. We'll decrease the transparency and now let's just move our visuals around to fit our new background. So now that I've aligned the visuals to the background, that's really it for this video. Uh, so just to recap, just to show you how the old version looked like compared to the new version. As you can see now, the, uh, your cards, your visuals are a lot more legible to read. So when you show it to someone, they'll immediately understand uh, what it is for and how they can use it. You're following some sort of format here. So you have some executive summary at the very top, which gives you all the kind of executive summary that you want to have. Um, you hold, have the slicers on the left hand side and some explanation on what the report is used for. So you can use it to slice and dice your data. And also you have uh, visuals, you have bar charts, you have maps and you have uh, order volume metrics over time which are clean and a lot easier in the eyes to read. And that's really it for this video. Did you have any tips that you think I missed that I should have covered in this video? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if it helped you. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the very end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one.